we are going to begin today's story in Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem was full of excitement. Everyone had gathered at the temple to hear the disciples. They wanted to hear about what were to happen next. Jesus' disciples followed Jesus closely with him for three years, and they saw him dying on the cross, and they witnessed him being uh, risen again and is alive in heaven. The things Jesus had done were amazing, and now the God, the Holy Spirit, were living inside the disciples, and his power was given to them to do wonderful miracles. Besides that, thousands of people were realizing their need for forgiveness and were becoming Christians. Christians are followers of Jesus. In God's church, his family of believers was growing. The news that sick people were being healed spread quickly throughout the entire city. Lots of sick people were brought to the disciples to be healed. Some were even brought from surrounding towns. The excitement increased as one by one, every sick person in the huge crowd was healed. But one group of people were not so happy about what was happening. The religious leaders. They had already arrested Peter and John for preaching about Jesus and warned them to stop. But Peter and John continued to preach about Jesus even more. So were all the other disciples. The religious leaders didn't want people to hear about Jesus. They were the ones that demanded Jesus' death on the cross because they didn't believe Jesus was God's son. They refused to believe he had risen from the dead. How could they stop the disciples from preaching? They knew one way to do it. They arrested them. The high priest sent the temple guards, the men in charge of keeping peace and order in the temple, to get the disciples and put them in jail. The disciples were being persecuted. Their persecution means being treated badly for believing in Jesus and preaching about him. But they knew God wanted them to tell others that only Jesus could save them. During the night, an amazing thing happened. An angel of the Lord appeared in the prison. The angel led Peter and the other disciples outside. Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life, he commanded. God wanted them to continue preaching about God, about the good news of Jesus, even though they might be treated badly again. Have you ever been treated badly because you believe in Jesus? Maybe some friends at school or on the playground might have made fun of you because you go to church or you believe in Jesus. Or maybe someone left you out or kept you out of an activity because you have to go to church on Sundays. God's family of believers are treated badly and sometimes even arrested and sent to jail or even killed. This is called persecution. Persecution is when you are treated badly because of what you believe. If you have believed on Jesus, you know that the Holy Spirit is your helper who will help you to, that you to know what to do and say when persecution comes and also will give you the courage to do it. He will give you peace too. Remember, peace is having calm and joy on the inside from knowing and trusting God. Even when things are going on, the things that are going on are hard and difficult. God gives peace and courage in persecution. The Holy Spirit gives peace and courage. So even though the disciples knew they would probably be persecuted again, they obeyed God. And God gave the disciples the courage they needed to obey and continue telling about Jesus. Early the next morning, the disciples entered the temple courts and began preaching once again, telling other people about Jesus again. Meanwhile, the high priest, they're, they're like the high government leaders, called a big meeting of the religious leaders. They were called a council. When all the members were gathered together, the command was given, bring the prisoners. Immediately, the officers hurried to prison cell to get the disciples. Everything looked fine. 
The door was tightly shut, and the guards stood watch outside. But when they opened the door, the cell was empty. The disciples were gone. Can you imagine the guards' surprise? What do you think the guards were thinking? Maybe they were like, "Oh no, we're gonna get in so much trouble." And what do you think the guards might have done? Maybe ran away because they didn't want to get in trouble. The officers and guards were afraid. It was their job to make sure the prisoners didn't escape. The officers quickly returned to the council to report. In Acts five twenty three, it says, "We found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside." The religious leaders were completely confused and wondered what to do. Then someone came and told them, "Look, the men you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people." The captain of the guard and the other officers rushed to the temple to get the disciples. This time, they had to be careful because the disciples had become popular with the Jewish crowd. The officers were afraid that if they hurt them in front of the people, they would probably become angry and throw stones at the guards. Soon, the disciples were standing before the council. The high priest demanded, "Didn't we order you not to teach in this name, Jesus? You have filled Jerusalem with your beliefs, and we and you want to blame us for his death." The Jewish leaders had refused to accept Jesus as God's son and had killed him. They ordered the disciples to stop teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. What would the disciples do? Would they obey these religious leaders, these men, or would they obey God, who told them to speak? Peter and the other disciples stood up bravely and said, "We ought to obey God rather than men." Then Peter told the whole council that they had killed Jesus, but God raised him from the dead. Now God had lifted Jesus up as Savior to give to. To give forgiveness of sins, Peter boldly said, "And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit." The Holy Spirit was giving them power to preach in boldness and to perform miracles. Say it with me: The Holy Spirit gives peace and courage. By the time Peter finished his message, the leaders were more furious than ever. They were so angry they wanted to kill the disciples. But then one of the most respected leaders, named Gamaliel, stood to speak. He commanded the whole council that the disciples be taken outside, and he wisely reminded the council that they should let God take charge of the disciples. It was God's business, not theirs. Let's not bother these men, Gamaliel urged. If they are not truly doing God's work, then we have nothing to worry about," he said. "But if they are doing God's work, then we cannot stop them, and we will be fighting against God." The leaders nodded their heads in agreement. They would follow Gamaliel's advice. The disciples were called back in, but before they were set free. The council had them severely beaten and ordered them once again not to speak in the name of Jesus. God did not keep the disciples from persecution, but He did give them peace and courage as they suffered. If you receive Jesus as your Savior and you believe in Him, the Holy Spirit is your helper, and God gives you peace and courage even in persecution. When God allows you to suffer, He will give you courage to live and speak in a way that shows His power in your life. Remember, Jesus was also persecuted. Other believers have been and are now still being persecuted. Like when you talk about the some of the pastors we know in Turkey or North Korea or missionaries, just because they believe in Jesus and are telling other people about who He is. They get sent to jail, and they are tr- being treated badly. Jesus said persecution would come to those who believe in him, but he also said Jesus is greater than the persecution. 
Even though it is hard, God can give you the courage to keep on telling others about Jesus. The Bible says, God will reward those who suffer for the sake of the gospel. You can also trust that God is still working even when you are persecuted. God was still working in the disciples' lives even though they were being beaten and being sent to jail. The religious leaders had the disciples beaten, ordered them to stop speaking about Jesus, and released them. What would they do now? Would they stop talking about Jesus? No! The disciples rejoiced that they had been able to suffer for Jesus. Now you're probably confused. If you're suffering, how can you be happy about it? How can you rejoice? Every day, the disciples preached about Jesus at the temple and went from house to house. They did not stop telling people that Jesus is the promised Savior who died and came alive again, and that He is the only way to become God's child. Maybe you know that you have sinned and have never received Lord Jesus as your Savior. God wants you to turn to Him. You can receive Him and become God's child. Receiving means taking Jesus as your own Savior from sin. Believing on, it, on His name means you trust with all your heart that Jesus died and rose again, taking the punishment you deserve for sin. When you believe on Jesus, He forgives your sin and you belong to Him and you are part of God's family. When you become a part of God's family, the Holy Spirit lives in you to help you in your life. It also means when you die, you will live forever with God in heaven. Please bow your head and close your eyes and think about these things. Do you know you are a sinner and that Jesus is the only one who can forgive your sin? Will you receive him now and become God's child? If you would like to talk to me about receiving Jesus and becoming God's child, have your parents email me or text me or call me. I would love to talk with you. Now, if you already believed that Jesus was is your Savior and that He died and rose again from the dead and you've accepted Him, then that's great. And in times of persecution, when you get made fun of, when you, um, other people treat you badly because of what you believe, remember, God gives you peace and courage in persecution. Continue to pray and ask God and ask the Holy Spirit to give you courage.